So the Sheikh Rahimahullah he says ثُمَّ لَعْنُ مُقَيَّدُ ثُمَّ لَعْنُ مُقَيَّدِ Sorry وَيَحْرُمُ It is haram لَعْنُ مُقَيَّدِ The cursing of a particular individual by name Say Fulan This individual لَعْن be on him Ibn Athir Rahimahullah in his kitab An-Nihaya Fi Gharib Al-Hadith which is a, a powerful book. This book, Al-Nihaya, by Ibn Athir, Rahimahullah. Ibn Athir talks about the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam if there are matters which are strange, a wording which is strange, the meaning is unclear. So you go to that book and you find what it means. It's like a dictionary, particularly for the hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um... So he said, ثُمَّ لَعْنُ مُقَيَّدِ Meaning, وَيَحْرُمُ It is haram لَعْنُ الْمُعَيَّن To specifically, to curse a particular individual. Ibn Athir, rahimahullah, he said, وَأَصْلُ الْلَعْنِ الطَّرْدُ وَالْإِبْعَادُ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَمِنَ الْخَلْقِ السَّبُّ وَالْدُعَاءِ He said, the original meaning of the word al-la'an, it means al-tardu wal-ib'adu. It means when you are distanced. From the from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when it comes from the creation, when al khalqi, when it comes from the creation, it is a sabbu insult. With dua and its supplication against you. That's what it means. Al Jawhari, who has a book called Al Sihah, uh, is called uh, Al Sihah by Imam Al Jawhari. He said, Al La'nu, the word Al La'nu means Al Tardu. وَالْإِبْعَادُ مِنَ الْخَيْرِ It is when you're distanced from good. And it is haram. وَهُوَ حَرَامٌ إِذَا لَعَنَ إِنسَانًا بِعَيْنِهِ It is haram if you curse a particular individual. It is haram for you to use la'an to a particular individual. Because of the Prophet, or wadabatan, even your riding beast. Because the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لَعَنُ الْمُؤْمِنِ Placing la'an on a believer is, كَقَتْلِهِ is like killing him. It is like killing him. Bukhari and Muslim both narrated that. Also, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "La yambaghi li sadiq an yakuna laana." It is not befitting for a sadiq to be a curse, one who curses. It is not befitting. So, laan is not a good characteristic of the believer. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he negated from a mu'min to be one that does la'an. He says, لَيْسَ الْمُؤْمِنُ بِالطَّعَانِ وَلَا بِالْلَعَانِ وَلَا فَاحِشِ الْبَذِي The Prophet said that the believer is not one that slanders. لَيْسَ الْمُؤْمِنُ بِالطَّعَانِ The believer is not one that slanders. وَلَا بِالْلَعَانِ And he's not one who places la'an over the people. You see, وَلَا بِالْفَاحِشِ الْبَذِي And he's not a person who's vulgar in his speech. Speaks vulgar. He's not like that. So, it is something that the believer needs to stay away from. But it is permissible. But it is permissible to use la'an when it's not a specific person. As the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, he said in the Quran, أَلَا لَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الظَّالِمِينَ May Allah curse be upon the ones who are oppressors, who transgress their limits. So now it's not a particular person, it is the ظَالِمِينَ Also the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لَا عَلَى اللَّهُ الْيَهُودَ وَالنَّصَارَى The Jews and the Christians, it's a general, it's not a specific individual. It is also permissible to use la'an for the kuffar generally. But the question is, is it permissible to curse the kuffar specific person? La'an be upon you. Can you do it? Huh? Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, Shaykh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, he says, وَلَعْنُ تَارِكِ الصَّلَاةِ عَلَى وَجْهِ الْعُمُومِ جَائِزٌ It is permissible for the one who abandons the prayer. Yeah, those who abandon the prayer. In general, they can be placed la'an over them, generally over them all. But to specify it on a particular one, فَالْأَوْلَى تَرْقُهَا It is more befitting, it's more preferable 
that the person leaves it off and doesn't do it to him. Why? Because it is possible that he might repent. Very good. Also, he says in another place, Shaykh al Sabbath in his Majmu' al Fatawa, he Rahimahullah says, في لعنة المعين من الكفار من أهل القبلة وغيرهم ومن الفساق بالاعتقادات أو بالعمل لأصحابنا فيها أقوال ابن تيمية says there are views regarding it if a specific, a specific kafir a curse can be placed upon him or the Muslim who shares with you facing the Qibla أهل القبلة are those who share the same Qibla as you not specifically the same عقيدة also فساق the criminals and the wrongdoers in their aqidah or in their actions. Ibn Taymiyyah says, in our madhab, madhab al hanbali there are views regarding it. Li-ashabina means in our madhab. Fiha aqwal, there are different views or different speeches. Ahaduha, the first one is, annahu la yajuzu bihal. It is not specific, is, it is not permissible in any situation. Annahu la yajuzu, it is not permissible bihalin in any situation. وهو قول أبي بكر عبد العزيز and that is the view of Abu Bakr ibn Abdul Abu Bakr عبد العزيز and there's another view which says the second يجوز في الكافر دون الفاسق that is permissible for the disbeliever but not for other than the disbeliever meaning any Muslim who is a criminal he can't be used for it but the kafir it can be and the third view is يجوز مطلقا it is permissible without any any restrictions it is permissible Um, that is important. So, ثُمَّ لَعْنُ مُقَيَّدِ The cursing of a specific person, ikhwari, it is prohibited. It is not permissible. Um, Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah, was asked about the cursing of Yazid ibn Muawiyah. Imam Ahmed said, الْإِمْسَاكُ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ to withhold from cursing him is more beloved to me. Imam ibn uh, Ahmad ibn Hanbal also said, "Ala al Jahmiya to Allah." May Allah's curse be upon the Jahmiya. Also, Imam Ahmad said, "Al Rafidah to Malguna, wal Mu'tazila to Malguna." The Rafidah who are cursed, the Mu'tazila who are cursed. But Imam Ahmad chose to withhold from the cursing of Al Hajjaj ibn Yusuf. He, he chose to withhold from that. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah says, من أصحابنا من أخرجوا عن الإسلام Amongst us, from the Hanbali madhab, there are those who take, who took Hajjaj ibn Yusuf out of Islam. And whether he was a Muslim or not, some took him out of Islam. لأنه أخاف على أهل المدينة because he placed fear in the people of Medina. وانتهك حرمة الله وحرمة رسوله. And Hajjaj, he stripped the sacred, this, uh, that which Allah and His Messenger both place high, uh, uh, gave a high position or made it sacred. The Ka'b, the Masjid al Nabu is sacred. The blood of the people of Medina was, sac- was not to be touched. So, based on that, they permitted to be, for him to be cursed. But the noble scholars, the high caliber scholars of the Indian Madhab, they refuse that, they don't allow that. And they place his affairs in the hands of Allah. The Shaykh goes on to say, it is also prohibited. That's why we say, we say, we say, and you place a sukoon on the sheen. Fuh, she. On it. Wahua mina bid il kalami. It is when the person speaks haram speech. It is when the person speaks haram speech. But the majority of this word, the word fuhsh, am al fahisha, when it's used, the majority of the time it really means zina. The word fuhsh, am al fahisha. The majority of the times when it's used, it means al zina. وأكثر استعمال الفاحشة في الزنا. The majority of its usage is zina. Also sometimes the scholars will say رجل بذيء فاحش. A man when he speaks vulgar. سيء القول. 
As the Prophet وسلم, said in the hadith which was mentioned previously, Bayhaqi narrated it, Ibn Hibban al-Tabarani in his Mu'jam al-Kabir, that the Prophet said, Inna Allah yubghidhu al-Fahish al-Badhi. Allah is angry and he hates the one who is al-Fahish al-Badhi, the one who is vulgar in his speech. Wa makrun, it is also prohibited to come with makr. Makr, brothers, is al-Khadi'ah, is to be deceitful. It is to bring out إِظْهَارُ غَيْرَ مَا فِي النَّفْسِ It is to bring out in the open that which is not really inside your heart and your mind. Basically deceiving the people. It is, that is what it is. وَالْبَذَاءَ Bada is, is the opposite of shyness. ضِدُّ الْحَيَاءَ It is also prohibited. To come with bada. Bada means what? Shyness. And as we all know, the hadith of Abu Huraira, in which Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said it. al hayau min al-Iman, Iman, shyness is part of the Iman. Wal-Iman fi al-Jannati wal-Bada'u min al-Jafa'i wal-Jafa'u fi al-Nari. Shyness is from Iman and Iman is in Jannah. Bada'u, which is lack of shyness, is from a jafa is to it is to be harsh and hard and harsh and hardness is in the hellfire the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said al hayau shu'batun min al imani shyness is um shyness is a, a branch from iman also the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said inna li kulli din khuluqa every religion it has a mana وَإِنَّ خُلُقَ هَذَا الدِّينِ And the character and the etiquettes of this religion is what? الْحَيَاءَ shyness. So it is important that a person comes with shyness and stays away from that which is opposite to it. The Shia goes on to say وَالسُخْرِيَّةِ وَالْهُزِّ سُخْرِيَّةِ Which is to mock. وَسُخْرِيَّةٌ وَالْهُزُّ it is to mock. And Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He prohibited mocking. The word sukhriya and the word al-huz, both of them are two words, lafzani, mutaradifani, ma'nahuma wahidun. They are synonyms. Both of them mean the same. And that is what al-Jawhari chose. He said al-huz'u -hu, al as-sukhriyatu. That the word huz'u is sukhriya. It is mocking somebody. And it is not permissible to do so. And Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He said in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, la yaskhar qawmun min qawmin, asa an yakunu khayran minhum, wa la nisa'un min nisa'in, asa an yakunna khayran minhunna. This ayah, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He says, O oh, those of you who believe, la yaskhar qawmun ayin, People should not mock another group of people. Why? Asa, it is possible. And yakunu khayran minhum, that they are better than them. Wala nisa'un, a woman, should not mock min nisa'in, another woman. Asa, it is possible. And yakunna khayran minhunna, that they are better than those who, which they are mocking. Dahaq ibn Muzahim, who is from the students of Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said, Nazala, this ayah came down in what? Fi wafdi Bani Tamim. It came down on the delegation of Bani Tamim. And they were those who yastahzi'una bi fuqara'i ashabi nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They used to mock the poor companions of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam such as Ammar, Khabbab, Bilal, Suhaib al-Rumi, Salman al-Farisi, Salim Mawla Abi Hudayfa. They used to mock them. Why? لِمَا يَرَوْنَ مِنْ رَثَاثَةِ حَالِهِمْ Because what they used to see them was what? How unappealing they were. مِنْ رَثَاثَةِ حَالِهِمْ Their situation, their appearance was not appealing. They looked very uh, unappealing. And so based on that, this verse came down on. So Allah says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا يَسْخَرْ قَوْمٌ مِنْ قَوْمٍ And the word al-qawm Ismun, it is a noun, يَجْمَعُ الرِّجَالَ وَالنِّسَاءَ It combines men and the women. 
But here it was specified only for the men. لِقَرِينَةٍ دَلَّتْ عَلَى ذَلِكَ Because a qarina indicated that. How? Because after that women were mentioned separately. They were taken out of this general meaning. Also, Anas ibn Malik, he chose another view that this ayah came down on Safiya bint Huyay, which is that some of the women they said about her, Yahudiyatun bint Yahudiyaini. She's a Jew from two Jews. And Allah also says, وَلَا تَنَابَزْ وَلَا تَلْمِزُ أَنفُسَكُمْ That one of you should not backbite one another. And should not slander one another, as Imam al baghawi mentioned in his tafsir. And the people who mock others, they only mock them because there is an element of arrogance in them. And arrogance is a characteristic that is prohibited from the creation, only permissible for the creator. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in the hadith al-Qudsi, which Bukhari, Muslim, sorry, which Muslim narrated in his sahih, al-'adhamatu izari. وَالْكِبْرِيَاءُ رِدَائِي Majesticness and highness is for who? It is Allah's upper garment. Sorry, it's lower garment. وَالْكِبْرِيَاءُ رِدَائِي And arrogance and to be high is my upper. فَمَنْ نَازَعَنِي فِي وَاحِدٍ مِنْ هُمَا أَلْقَيْتُهُ فِي النَّارِ Anyone who disputes with me in any of those two, I will throw him into the hellfire. Imam Ahmad narrated in his Musnad that the Prophet said to Abi Dhar, when Abi Dhar criticized Bilal, the Prophet said to him, Unzur look at, at yourself. فَإِنَّكَ لَسْتَ بِخَيْرِ مِنْ أَحْمَرَ You are not better than a, a red one. وَلَا أَبْيَضَ And you're not better than a, a white one. إِلَّا أَن تُفَضِّلَهُ بِتَقْوَى اللَّهِ Unless taqwa of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala gives you virtue. وَالْكِذْبَ قَيِّدِي The Shaykh went on to say it, the line. He said, lying is also prohibited. But the Shaykh said, قَيِّدِي Restrict it. He said, restrict the lying. What does he mean by that? He means not all lying are prohibited. It's restricted. There are times when it's permissible. So what we know is, أَنَّ الْكَذِبَ حرام إلا في ثلاث في ثلاثة مواضع. Lying is permissible except three times, and the three times are as follows. وهي خداع الكفار في الحرب. When you're in a battle with the disbelievers, deceiving them in the battlefield is permissible. وللزوجة and your wife. You're allowed to lie to her. Walil islahi to bring peace between two. The khida of the kuffar, it means whilst in the battlefield, fighting face to face. Face to face. It does not mean every time and every place. It, it means when in the battlefield. Walil zawja and the wife. Also, the wife is restricted to something that brings, that strengthens the bond between the two. So, for instance, a man may say to his wife, I have never seen any woman on the face of this earth better looking than you. Or, this is the best food I have ever tasted. These are statements that are permissible for one to say. But to lie to your wife when you're outside and she calls you and says to you, where are you? She wants to know and you lie and you say it's permissible for me to lie to my wife. It is not permissible. That is not what the, the hadith is talking about. Walil islahi. And the third one is when you want to bring peace between two people and you say, Akhir Fulan, Wallah, he's always, he always mentions good of you and he loves you so much. And so you want both of them to come together and you want this, uh, this type of conflict that is taking place between the two of them to come to an end. That's what you want. These mawadi, these places, yubahu al kadibu fiha. Lying is permissible in these places. And Imam Muhammad bin Hanbal, that is what he mentioned. And that is based on the hadith of Asma bin Tuyazid. That the Prophet said, La yasluhu al kadibu illa fi thalathin. 
lying, it is not permissible except it in three places. الرجل يكذب في الحرب والحرب خدعة. A man lies and in lying it's about trick. والرجل يكذب بين الرجلين ليصلح بينهما. A man, an individual, he lies. He lies between two men so he can bring peace between the two of them. والرجل يكذب للمرأة. A man, he lies to his wife ليرضيها بذلك so he can please her with this. It is permissible. Tirmidhi narrated it. وَحَسَّنَهُ And Tirmidhi graded this hadith to be Hassan, sound. But, Abdurrahman ibn Yahya al-Mu'allimi. Abdurrahman ibn Yahya al-Mu'allimi, he has a book called Haqiqatul Ta'wil. He has a book called Haqiqatul Ta'wil. And Abdurrahman ibn Yahya al-Mu'allimi, Abdul Rahman ibn Yahya al-Mu'allimi, um, his mu'allafat, his books, has been recently released by Dar Alam al-Fawaid. All of it. There are some missing from it. But a lot of his works, they have brought it together. And within those books, there's a book called Haqiqatu Ta'wil. Haqiqatu? Haqiqatu Ta'wil. And Abdul Rahman Ihayya Al-Mu'allimi in that book, Haqiqatu Ta'wil, he mentions that this hadith is not authentic. Even that though this hadith in its original essence is in Bukhari. And he brings many reasons why he considers it to be weak. And so it's good for a student of knowledge to go back and check on it, and read it. One of the reasons he brings after he goes through the chain and he speaks about it, is that he speaks about, Rahimahullah, that when a man lies to his wife on these matters, it does cause for her not to trust him, even if it's for him to please her. And he talks about a personal experience that he goes through, he went through, because Abdul Rahman Yahya al was married to an old woman, in which he married from India. Abdul Rahman Yahya al Sheikh Al-Albani said about him, he is Imam with Dhahabi of this era. He died before Al-Albani. But he said to him, he was the Dhahabi al-Asr, Imam al Dhahabi of his era when he lived. Abdul Rahman ibn Yahya al muallimi He was a Yemeni originally. He was a Yemeni originally, and he used to live in Mecca. He used to live in? He used to live in Mecca, rahimahullah. And... Uh, he used to stay in Maktabatul Haram. That's where he used to stay, Maktabatul Haram in Mecca, which now is not is closed down. It doesn't exist. He used to sit there and he used to author. He used to have a basket. He used to have a basket. And so he used to author, 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 right, 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 right. And he used to place it in that basket. And so what happened was years later, years later, his works were found from those baskets and places here and there and notes. One of the books that were thought to be complete, but then were realized was not fully complete, was his Risala, Risalatul Ubudiyah, in which it talks about Al Ibadah, Ishtibah, in which it talks about Ubudiyah, servitude, was thought to be complete. But when Dara Alam al-Fawaid came together, they realized Dr. Uthman Mu'allim had some copies of the book. Uh, he had some copies of the book which was not added to his previous publications. And so they added it to it. Um, and so now, alhamdulillah, it is out there for the Talib Ilm to read. And that book when you read it, 
it gives you a powerful insight of servitude, ubudiyya, tawheed, and aqidah. He also has matters in which he speaks about, which is nahu and usul al fiqh. Whatever matter he talks about, you who's reading it will benefit so much fawaid out of it. And insha'Allah ta'ala, bi'idhnillahi al-kareem, the books I want to go through, insha'Allah ta'ala here, is his book, Haqiqatul Bid'ah. It's one of the books he authored. He's called it Haqiqatul Bid'ah. The real understanding of what Bid'ah means. Because reality is now, that word Al-Bid'ah has not been understood as it should be. It has not been understood uh, the way it should be. Very good. So, inshallah ta'ala, when we do take that book, we will speak more about him and his works and how this, uh, how his efforts were put together. Wallahi, one of the things that was said by Abdurrah- about Abdurrahman ibn Yahya al-Mu'allimi was if he only had those who stood up for him to propagate his works he would have been from those people at this time who would have who would have been placed up there he just didn't have that just like it was said about Layth ibn Sa'ad Layth ibn Sa'ad kana afqahu min Malik and he had more fiqh than Imam Malik except that Imam Malik had his right students he had the students who spread his madhab and who passed it on and gave that knowledge and that is one of the things that makes a teacher or an Imam madhab go because he doesn't have no students who passes it on or who spreads it for him Ya Rahimahumullahu Jami'ah and may Allah have mercy upon all of them. So Wal Kadib Wal Kidba Kayidi Bigairi Khida'il Kafirina Biharbihim Walil Irsi O Islahu Ahlita Ahlutana Kudi. So he mentioned those three times when line is permissible. Khida'ul Kafirina deceiving the disbelievers Biharbihim when in a war with them. Walil Irsi, your wife. O Islah Ahli Tanakudi, or placing peace between two love, two one, two individuals who in between them, which is what? Who have some form of conflict between the two. There is something I need to speak about, which is a matter which needs to be known, which is the issue of Al Ma'aril. The issue of what? Ma'arid. Ma'arid means when a person uses a statement that can carry more than one meaning and that word or that meaning there is a close meaning and there is a far-fetched meaning but it still falls under the wording you're using. But what comes to the mind of the person is this meaning but you don't mean it, you mean the other. This is called what? It is called Ma'arid. And it is permissible as Imran ibn al-Husayn radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said inna fil ma'aridhi la manduhatu min al-kathibi which basically means that using Ma'arid it suffices a person from lying. Even in these three situations, a person should not result to lying. The person should not result to lying. If he could find the uh, option to use ma'arid, he does it. <coughs> the word has an apparent meaning that seems to this person but you don't mean that, you mean another. For example, somebody asks you and says to you, who is this person? And you say, it's my brother. Because you're scared that somebody may cause him a harm. 
So he said, Akhi, this is my brother. Now he may understand from it, blood, brother, blood brother. Your blood brother. But wa'ana fi dini, but you specifically meant religious reason. He's my brother in religion. For example, you may use the word as roof. But you don't mean it as in the roof of the house, you mean the sky. Or you might use the word firash. Firash. Which means anything that is spread out. But a lot of the time the word firash is used on the earth. Uh, sorry, it's used on the ground. And the bed. All of those are used. For, but you mean the earth. The actual earth, the floor. For example, you might use the word libas. Clothe. But you don't mean it as clothing here. You mean it as nighttime. As Allah said, وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ لِبَاسًا Or for example, uh, meanings like that. So it's permissible for a person to use those meanings if uh, he is forced to use it to save something to, to, in any of those situations. Or even other than those situations, a person is allowed to use it. And the evidence for that is Abu Huraira, a man came up to him and he said to him, I invite you to my house. Abu Huraira did not want to hurt him or did not want to cause him any pain or did not want to be harsh to him. So he said to him, I'm fasting. And so the individual left him. And so in the Asr time, Duhur time Asr, the individual saw Abu Huraira eating. And he said to him, I thought you said to me you were fasting. And Abu Huraira said, Naam, I was fasting. Ah, And I was fasting from eating with you. Because the original meaning of the word fasting means alim sak is to withhold. So he meant the linguistic meaning. But he understood it as a technical meaning, which is what? Al imsaku an al muftirati min tulu' al fajri ila wurub al shamsi. To withhold from the muftirat, the things that break your fasting, from the when sun rises to the when the sun sets, he restricted it to that meaning, that, that, and that was what came to his mind. Because the word took a technical meaning. But no, he meant the linguistic meaning. But what we need to understand is the ma'aril, it is permissible for it to be used. But you're not allowed to use the word wallahi. If you use the word wallahi, then it is not what you meant, it's more, it's more than, it, mean, it is what he understood from it. It is what is understood for it, understood from it. Not what you meant. So it's very dangerous that a person says Wallahi after it. Some scholars they said, وَتُبَاحُ الْمَعَارِيضُ وَلَوْ مَا عَادَ مِنْ حَاجَةِ إِلَيْهَا The ma'arid is permissible even when there is no need for it. And some said, only it's, it is only permissible when there is a need for it. And so there is that dispute amongst the ulama. We will stop there, inshallah.